in life, we are all tested in different ways, with love, with loss, with abundance, and with lack. And one of the hardest tests is when you love something so much, it begins to steal your peace. Hello and welcome to Her Space, the podcast that creates footprints for a purposeful woman. It has been one hot minute and I have truly, truly missed doing this. Today, I will be talking to you about my YouTube journey, why I ended it, and how I made my way or why I made my way back to the world of podcasts. So in 2020, during the lockdown, I had just read a book by Dr. Semiat called The Orchestra, I think. And I remember after reading it, I shared long voice notes about my thoughts on it um, on a group chat with my girlies. And this was usually a tradition we had. It's sort of unplanned, like an unconventional book club, if you might. So we would share our constant thoughts on the books we were reading, what we what worked, what didn't, what we felt worked, what we felt didn't work, and what we wish she did, or, you know, just thoughts, generally, whatever that means for you. And I remember in between those long voice notes, that's for that particular book, the orchestra, one of the girls said, you know, you should start a YouTube channel having these types of conversations. And oh my gosh, I was, I was perplexed, like, ah, me, no, <laughs> this can never be me. And yeah, we just moved on from that conversation. But I guess what we didn't realize was that her saying that sort of planted a seed inside me because I found like over the stretch of about two weeks, I was diving and exploring the world of books in on YouTube and I discovered BookTube. And yeah, I just never went back from that. And so when I launched... Um, my YouTube channel, I was just really having fun with it. I didn't have a plan for it. I didn't do it for any other reason other than the fact that it made me happy to just have conversations about things that I genuinely loved. I didn't have like any organized setting for it whatsoever. I just spoke from my heart. And yeah, like I said, it was just fun. But then about a year afterwards, I went through a difficult pregnancy and that made it almost impossible for me to show up. And I guess coupled with the fact that I really I didn't want my pregnancy to be out there um, so much, um, I just kind of stayed away, naturally stayed away from the uh, making videos. But then much later in my postpartum days, I attempted a comeback and this was the root of most of the doubt I carried with me through the years. Um, so yeah, when I got back, I would, I don't know if it had to do with the algorithm, but the algorithm will constantly bring conversations on, especially on Twitter, on my TL, about the concept of tabaluj. And for those of you who don't know what that is, it means the public display of beauty, which is sinful in Islam. And I remember a lot of my content from then would have me constantly saying, I'm not sure if I'm going to go ahead with making being on YouTube. I'm not sure. I remember I said that a lot because a few people that knew me personally would send me messages asking, like, we really don't want you to stop. Why do you want to stop? You have something good going on. But... um. But I think I just had too many questions, too many unanswered questions. And top of the list was about female scholars and how their videos are everywhere online. And I just felt if I was able to cover up and I was making conversation about something decent that people were benefiting from um, one way or the other, I just felt like, why can't this be accepted? Like, why can't it be acceptable? And then um, I think one of the things that really freaked me out was um, one man posted a video or a picture of himself and his wife. And it was on Twitter. It's always on Twitter. Twitter is so toxic, guys. Like, I make dua for myself to be able to walk away from that platform because it is too, too toxic. toxic. Anyway, so I remember this man... Um, 
put up a picture of, I mean, it was, I, I don't remember if it's a picture or a video, but it was him and his wife and the entire comment section was blowing up with the Haram police and just people just calling him a deus. I think I'm pronouncing this correctly. I'm not sure, but they were calling him a deus. And again, for those of you who don't know what that means, it means um, a man who lacks protective jealousy over the females in his life. And and when I started researching on the concept of the youth, I was really terrified. The idea that my husband could get punished based on the choices I made, I just felt, uh uh-uh, no. So I think I just silently pulled myself out of that whole YouTubing thing. But I am a creative. And for those of you listening to this that are creatives, you would know that you can't silence a creative heart. No matter how much you try, it will always find an outlet. So I guess your job is just to kind of guide it to, to the right outlet that is in line with your values, your religion, and all of those things. And so, again, my creative heart, or let's say my creative juices were begging to be let out. And I just found myself, like, it just led me back to YouTube And this time around, it was different because the first time when I started, I was just really having fun with it. But this time around, I really wanted to see, like I wanted to um, have timeline projections. I just wanted to do it right. I wanted to grow on YouTube. And I I honestly, I was, I did the work. I was doing the, I mean, (laughs) I was still doing the work when I ended it. But the point is, I, I read about it. I studied how people, the trajectory of people's growth, and I was implementing and replicate, replicating the things they suggested. I, I remember I made, I was able to make four videos in four weeks, which is one video per week. I, I would get an average of six to between six and 12 subscribers, new subscribers per video. And like the algorithm itself was cheering me on. <laughs> Honestly, it felt like I was doing something right. And, but then, and I was happy, like I was genuinely happy. Why I say this, why I was saying, why I'm trying to, what I'm trying, the point I'm trying to make is, oh, I don't know why I'm stuttering so much. But anyway, the point I'm trying to make is that I was doing it right. And I was organized. I was on schedule. I had a time and date for my videos. I was doing everything I was supposed to do. And in as much as I was doing this for YouTube, somehow it was also helping me grow as an individual, which I've heard like so many YouTubers talk about YouTube helped them grow internally. And I felt it was doing the same for me. Um, but then in as, so you can see how easily I could have been happy. I mean, I had an outlet, but I could let, let out my creative juices. I was growing internally and not just that. I was seeing even the growth on in the quality of my videos. And like I said, I was getting more organized. The content, I was working on making the content have a lot more depth. Actually, I was at that phase when I made the decision to stop. So I loved it. I loved every inch of it. But the problem was that every video that I posted, I was peril back to ruminating over and over again about how halal or how haram this was. Um, I remember the first time that that was the first time that I pulled away when I discovered the concept of the youth, I think I, it, I was not at ease. And I remember I reached out to a one and a famous online, um, Sheikh who I, I intentionally picked him because I knew he wasn't liberal in any sense. And I, I remember I said salam to him and he responded with wa alaikum as salam. But then I sent a long as a long essay asking my questions because I wanted to understand like what are what are what are the reasons or what's the logic what's the rooting and all of that and I must have scared him away (laughs) I admit because he didn't respond after that so yeah anyway this time around I I would go online I spoke to a few people really like a few people that I respected their knowledge of the dean and mostly people were just I would get you know, I would get different opinions. That's just what it was. Um, But the problem for me was 
and and even though most people were more inclined towards the fact that it was haram, I guess, I think I could counter most of the arguments they presented or the evidence they presented and all of that. So every argument that was presented, I had a counter argument and I I had my friend, lucky for me, who was um, able to sit with me through this moment and her and I would constantly share we would constantly share our analysis on the situation. Like I'd tell her, these are my thoughts. This is what I'm seeing. Like the ruling most of the time is quite clear, but then in action, I see a lot of things that contradict that clarity. So we would constantly go back and forth and back and forth and back and forth. And lucky for me, she had gone through a similar process, I guess, or a similar situation in her life. It wasn't with YouTube. It was a different thing entirely, but she had. So she kind of understood And at the end of the day, she would always tell me, you know what, at the end of the day, it's how you feel at the end of your life. Would you look back on this and feel proud? Um, Ten years from now, would you look back on this and feel proud? And even though I would say, yes, I would, there was still a part of me that wasn't at ease with the situation. So um, I remember the day I uploaded my fourth and final video I'd made dua, and I think that was the first time I made dua about this. And I sat down and I was writing down the script for my second, um, for my fifth video. And I fell asleep doing that. And I, one of the thoughts that it is just so strange, honestly, but I remember just sleeping and my mind would be saying this to me honestly I was sleeping but my mind was speaking to me I don't know if that happens have you guys ever experienced that so my mind is like it's just the idea that I'm one search away and anybody can just type in my name and you know I'd come up any sick person and you know they could do anything they wanted with my picture even though like these this was a thought that already crossed my mind even before that moment and I had I had a counter argument hell I had a great deal of counter arguments trust me I'm the debate queen <laughs> I can debate and convince you out out of anything I pride myself in that honestly so I even though but I have already countered that so many times I think at that moment I just felt it felt different So I remember I woke up and I picked up my phone. It was 4 a.m. And I was like, I just went, I just went on YouTube. Really, there was no feeling whatsoever. It was just that thought that I slept with. And I woke up feeling and I just went and I erased everything. And as soon as I was done, I sent a message to my friend. I was like, I did it. I deleted everything. It's over. And I remember when I woke up in the morning I went back to bed and when I woke up in the morning, I saw her message and she was like, I didn't believe that you actually did it until I went and searched and saw it for myself. And I said to her, at the end of the day, I just chose peace. I was tired of debating about the rulings on this thing. I didn't like the way it made me feel. And it just... At this moment in my life, it doesn't even matter to me whether it's halal or haram. I realized it was costing me my peace. And I went back to one of the principles that I live by, which was an advice given to us by the Prophet Muhammad, which is that if something disturbs the peace of your heart, just give it up, let it go. And at the end of the day, that's just what I did. I chose peace. And all that, I, I, I loved creating videos. I enjoyed the pre, the process of it, everything that came with it. I was, <laughs> I like to say I was at the peak of it. I wasn't, obviously, with what, my 400 subscribers. But yeah, at the time, it just felt like, you know what, I'm doing this and I'm doing it the right way. But the fact that it kept stealing away my peace, I just, I couldn't go on. I just couldn't. And since I made that decision, funny enough, there hasn't been much sadness. I mean, there was this one time where I usually have um, scheduled Wednesday for when I go on YouTube analytics because I try not to stay, you know, so obsessed with 
all these algorithm and how well I was doing and all of that. But I went online and I, I on Wednesdays, I usually check my YouTube analytics to see how the video is doing and, you know, just make maybe make adjustments for the next video. So it was Wednesday and I, I got the notification on my phone, like time for YouTube analytics and, you know. And I, I make a little party out of it, you know, to make a cup of tea, sit down, look at it and, you know, analyze and all of that. But when I saw the notification, I felt a bit sad. I, I actually went on YouTube studio and I saw that oh, there was nothing there. So I think that was the one moment of sadness that I experienced. But after that, I feel like I've just been basking in the peace and living in the peace. And... Like I mentioned, a creative heart is a creative heart and it will always look for an outlet. And that's why I made the decision to retrace my steps back to podcasting and just see what I can make out of it. And I have been so excited about it. The whole experience has me thinking about how there are times when we love something so much or someone and it gives us or they give us so much joy. It fills our heart, but it also robs us of peace. And we are constantly, it kind of puts us in a position where we're constantly questioning ourselves, our values and whatnot. And maybe that's just a sign from Allah that it's time to set that thing free or that person free and just find peace within your decision and yourself. I've heard people say that sometimes when they love something so much, they don't even make dua about it for or make istikara about it because they're afraid that what they want is not the same as what's best for them. And I would always say to people that when you pray that Allah chooses what is best for you, make sure that you are also praying that whatever Allah chooses for you, he makes it easy on your heart to accept that decision. I mean, that's the whole point of istikhara. The whole point is to seek Allah's guidance with trust that Allah will take care of you and he will show you mercy because he is our Rahman. Another point of reflection for me in this whole experience has been that um, I realized one of the reasons why I held on for so long, despite being aware that it was costing me my peace, I, I realized I found it really difficult to let go because I have always been afraid of goodbyes. And I believe this isn't even a me thing. I think most humans struggle with the concept of endings. And I, 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 I feel this happens largely because in some way we see endings as a form of failure. When we end a relationship or a marriage, when we walk away from a job or a project, especially if those things are dear to our hearts, there's a part of us that almost always feels as if we have failed at something. So in this case for me, I felt as if I had failed in building a successful YouTube channel. But I also think one way to look at this is that the end of one thing almost always signifies a new beginning, a beautiful beginning even. And just staying fixated in what we deem as the failure, which is the ending, or staying stuck in the thing that is costing us our peace, it steals away the opportunity to explore the new beginning, which is a gift that Allah has handed to us. One question that I'm likely to get, I don't know why I feel this way, but I do feel as if um, this question is likely to come up at some point is if the fear is Tabaruj, what am I going to do about my Instagram um, and other forms of social media where I have a bit of my pictures or some videos and stuff like that and honestly 
the honest answer I can give is, I don't know. I am just taking it one step at a time and just hoping that Allah accepts the sincerity of my efforts. So with that being said, I welcome you once again to this podcast. And in this season, we will focus on bringing you guest speakers that we will have deep conversations that will help you grow in every way, inshallah, spiritually, mentally, physically, and whatnot. I am so, so excited to fully dive into this because we have amazing lineups of speakers for you. And I pray that Allah sustains you and I so we can fully enjoy Her Space Podcast. We will be coming to you every Monday at 8 a.m., inshallah. So make sure you subscribe so you do not miss a thing. On that note, we have come to the end of this episode. Thank you so much for listening. Make sure you like, comment, and share this with the people you love. Until next time. Bye.